weakness. And so we magnify you. And we've been encouraged, God, to understand, Lord Jesus, that you are the answer. You're the answer to the world's dilemma. You're the answer to our dilemma. And so we come again, God. Father, we come in your presence and we take joy in coming. We don't come in vain. We don't come begrudgingly. Father, we bless you that we've been chosen to come. Father, we praise you for a heart to pray. God, we thank you because the enemy shall not overthrow us. Somebody bless him right now. Somebody bless him right now. Huh? Somebody praise him. Huh? Somebody praise him. Huh? Somebody praise him. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Come on, thank him. 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 Huh? Come on, thank him out of your spirit. Huh? Come on, thank him out of your spirit. Huh? Come on, thank him out of your spirit. Come on, thank him out of your spirit. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Glory to God. God, we bless you. God, we praise you. God, we praise you. God, we praise you. Father, we pray this day. God, we pray this day. We pray this day. We come to prayer, God. We come seeking your wisdom. We come seeking your knowledge, God. We come seeking your way, God. God, we need guidance. We need your understanding. Father, the things that you've given us to do. God, we pray today. We pray for guidance. God, we need understanding. God, we need a way out. God, we need a way out. God, we need understanding. God, if you don't help us, the enemy will take us out. If you don't give us direction, God, show us how to maneuver through the wave. God, show us how to break through, Lord. God, show us. Give us divine direction. Father, you've given us a plan. And the enemy got a plan. And Father, he's opened up the head. He's opened up the gates to come against us. But God, give us your wisdom. God, give us your plan. God, show us. Show us the divine way. God, we don't know how to go. We've never been this way. Lord, the assignment that you've given every last one of us. God, we know it comes with a price. But God, we're willing to pay the price. But God, give it to us. God, give us wisdom about the natural realm. God, give us knowledge that we know not of. God, open up the heavens and show us, God. Show us how to maneuver. Show us how to get out, God. Show us how to get in, God. God, lead us and guide us. God, teach us your way. God, let us not be defeated. God, we come against every enemy that comes to drive us out of our place in you. God, we come against every demonic spirit that comes to drive us out of our destiny. Lord, we bind the hands of the enemy. God, we build a shed around ourselves. God, put a shield there. God, we put a shield over our minds. God, we block the enemy. We block the fiery darts that come against the mind, God. In the name 
name of Jesus, uh, Satan, we command you uh, to take your hands off the mind. Uh, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Uh, we cast you down in the name of Jesus. Uh, we cause confusion uh, to be rebuked right now. Uh, we cause confusion uh, and misdirection uh, to go another direction. Uh, we place you back up uh, in the pit of hell where you came from. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we speak peace. Uh, Father, we speak calm. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we speak it in Jesus' name. Uh, somebody give him a praise right there. Uh, in the name of Jesus. God show up. Show up like never before. God show up because the enemy has attacked up. But you got another plan. Father, I hear it in the spirit. I feel it in the spirit that you got another plan. Father, we may have missed you the first time. But God, we're not going to miss you again. God show it to us again. Somebody tell the Lord. Revive the plan, God. Revive the plan, God. Revive the plan. God up. Revive the plan God up. Don't let the enemy take us out up. Don't let him destroy our destiny up. Don't let him bring it down God up. In the name of Jesus up. But God sent a whirlwind up. God sent a cloud up. God sent help up. Send help out of Zion up. Send help God up. Send help out of the holy place up. Send help God up. Send the angels up. Send the angels up. Send Michael God up. Send the garrison up to fight on our behalf. Up. Let them dip their swords up in the blood of Jesus. Up. Let them fight with the blood. Up. The blood of Jesus. Up. We plead the blood up. from the top of our head up. to the sole of our feet. Up. The blood of Jesus. Up. The blood of Jesus. Up. The blood, the blood, up. the blood, the blood, up. the blood on our assignment. Hold up, I shut you. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, somebody give him glory. Glory, come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. We bind sickness. We bind sickness now. We bind sickness and disease. We bind in the name of Jesus. We speak to our bodies. We command our bodies to line up with the word. I speak it in Jesus' name. We speak to the heart. We command you to function the way God put it in there. We speak to the kidney. We speak to the liver. You won't stop destiny. In the name of Jesus, I speak a new one. In the name of Jesus, according to your word, God, you said in your word that by your stripes we're healed. We come against fibroid tumors. We come against cancer in the name of Jesus. We come against liver disease in the name of Jesus. We come against tuberculosis. We come against HIV in the name of Jesus. We wash the blood system. We cleanse the body now. We transform the inside of the body by the blood of Jesus. We transform the blood system. We transform the nervous system. In the name of Jesus, I speak new hair. I speak it in Jesus' name. I speak a new heart. I speak a new kidney. I speak new lungs. I speak new legs. I speak new nerves. In the name of Jesus. Who 
Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. We rebuke weakness. We rebuke weakness. We come against congested heart failure. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. I speak new strength. I speak new strength. I speak a revival of the heart in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 Come on, somebody give him a praise. 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 Somebody give him glory. Oh, Bashaya. Oh, Bashaya. Oh, Bashata. Oh, Bashika Masaya. Oh, Bashando no more sete behe. Here they be sete behe. Here they be sete behe. Say to the Lord rebuke you. I rebuke you over every family. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every backsliding spirit. Every person that's represented here today. That has a loved one. That's trying to slip out of the hands of God. I snatch you back now. In the name of Jesus. I snatch you back into the will of God. I confuse your plan. Your plan outside of God won't work. Your plan outside the glory won't work. And Father, I speak it up in the name of Jesus that you will begin to crush up, crush the plans that they started outside of your will. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak it now that you will confuse the hand of the plan, that you will bring them back in the fold, that you will get in their sleep today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, shalabasika de behete behaya. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Every preacher call them back. Every evangelist call them back. Every teacher call them back. In the name of Jesus. Father, put the fire back in them. Father, put the fire back in them. Put the fire in them like never before. In the name of Jesus. God in our nation. Put the fire in us, God. Let the fire go out today. Let it go out on TBN. Let it go out in the name of Jesus. Let the fire hit the airways. Let the fire ignite God. Oh God, uh, revive us today. Uh, revive the nation today. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, revive us, God. Uh, Father, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for your mighty hand in Israel. Uh, we thank you for Israel. Uh, we bless Israel. Uh, we bless him in Jesus' name. Uh, Father, we know uh, that you got a plan. Uh, we know the enemy is raging. Uh, but God, keep it on course. Uh, keep it on course, God. Uh, we know that something shall be. Uh, but don't let it get ahead of your schedule. Uh, in the name of Jesus, 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 we bind the hand of terrorism in the wrong place. But Father, we know that your word says that in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars. But Father, we rebuke unnecessary wars. We rebuke the wrong timing for wars. We rebuke the wrong city for warfare. We rebuke the wrong country 
river warpath. Satan, we command you to stay your hand. We command you to obey. We command you to get in the plan. You're not running the show. We command you to get behind the voice of God and move up in syncopation and move up with the anointing and move in harmony in the name of Jesus. You're not the attacker. You have a job to do that will bring glory to God. Glory to our Savior. Glory to the Lord. Come on, people. Come on, people. Come on, people. Oh, Rebbe, Rebbe, Kosha, Namaha. Oh, Rebbe, Kasi, Rebbe, Hen, Rebbe. Oh, Rebbe, Rebbe, Rebbe. Oh, Rebbe, 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 Rebbe. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 We pray for our nation. 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 We pray for New York. Oh, share the Yes, share the Say to me. Yes, share the Sada Baha. Yes, the body of Sida Baha. He that ever be said to me. We pray, God. We pray for this country. Only the old Shanda. They're trying to be a godless country. But we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, take your place. Take it, God. Take it. They don't want to give it to you. But take it, God. Whatever you got to do. If you got to send more fire, send the fire. If you got to send more floods, send the floods. But turn our hearts back to you, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rebbe, say, Rebbe. Oh, Rebbe, say, Rebbe. Oh, Rebbe, say, Rebbe. Oh, Rebbe, say, Rebbe. Oh, bless him. 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 Come on for the next five minutes. Pray for your family. Pray for your family. Pray for your family. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, Bashatabaha. Oh, Bashikadabaha. Yes, Lord Jesus. We bless your God. 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 Go Rebbe Kasaya. Come on and bless him for your family. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Father, we praise you. We thank you for our families. 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 We thank you for them now, Jesus. Oh God, we come against that heart failure. We speak the strength. We thank you, God, for the deliverance. We thank you for oxygen, God. We spoke it. We spoke it in the name of Jesus and you brought it to pass. We glorify your name, Jesus. We thank you, God, for the complete restoration. Father, complete healing in the name of Jesus. God, according to your will, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Sheila Mahaya. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. 
Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, God. Oh, you may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your hand, anger. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just worship him a minute. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. your Bibles if you would. And turn with me to the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. The book of Ephesians, the first chapter. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Melissa, help her get that table. Ephesians, the first chapter. And while they're setting that up, Father, we thank you for the man of God. We thank you. We thank you for this day. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your will being done. Thank you for strength out of Zion. Bless the Lord for Mother Boy. God, give us strength. In the name of Jesus. Father, strengthen her body right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to your high name, God. Come on, somebody help me pray right there for about 30 seconds. Touch her body right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Give her strength from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Say that I bind you. Bind your hands. I bind your works. 
confuse your plan in the name of Jesus. I splatter the blood on the blueprint. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Splatter blood on the blueprints. Cause you not to be able to see. Oh, glory to God. Thank you for it now, God. Thank you for Pastor God. Thank you for his strength, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the will being done, even in his old age. Thank you for the will being done, God. God, I love you today. God, I bless your name today. Strengthen us. Can we just give him some worship for a minute? Just give him some worship for a minute. Just give him some worship for a minute. Give him some worship for a minute. Give him some worship for a minute. minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Glory to your high name, God. Glory to your high name, God. A new plan. A new plan. Somebody bless him for a new plan. Keep hearing the Lord say that a new plan. New direction. Glory to your high Glory to your high name. Blessing, blessing, blessing. Blessing, 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 blessing. Come on, somebody bless him for new direction. Somebody bless him for new direction. Come on, you bless him for new direction. Come on, you bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I feel that in the name of Jesus. New plan. Thank you, Lord. New direction. Somebody say, no more defeat. No, you say it like you mean it. No more defeat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody say it again. I feel a breakthrough right there. No more defeat. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sister Madge, get that prayer shawl and put it on that table. I can't wait anymore. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians. I wanted to bring something. I wanted to bring something the Lord has been dealing with me about. Very strongly. When it comes down to the life, you want to get the rest of that stuff for me. Come down to the life of the believer that prays and the believer that chooses to pray. And that's why I tell you all the time that prayer has to be a God-given desire. It has to be provoked and originated from what the Lord has called you to do. And I repeat it over and over and over again without 
the sacrifice of prayer, there is no results of prayer. There is no results of prayer. And as I begin to pray on Saturday night, <clears throat> it's when I study for prayer for the week. On Saturday night, I was in my uh, prayer room at home in Georgia. And the Lord just began to speak some things to me. And I don't know if you've ever experienced God ministering <clears throat> some things to you. And it's not that you haven't heard it before. It's just the Lord bringing the reminder. And then he allows you to see that it was ne very necessary that we follow his plan. That we follow his plan. He has a plan. God has a plan and we have a plan. The Bible said in the book of Proverbs, there are many plans in the mind of man, but only the plan of the Lord will stand. Oh, somebody, that, that, that'll preach all by itself right there. Only the plan of the Lord will stand. Many things that we desire to do, but if it's not according to the will of God. And so when I look at that and, I, and God begin to deal with me intensely about people making sure that in this course of time that we are understanding and grabbing and grabbing the methods and the power of prayer, grabbing the understanding of prayer. Prayer is not, prayer is not hype. Prayer is not, you know, prayer is not, a, a, even though we are excited about the move of God, but prayer is not excitement. Prayer is not something that you, that, that you look to, to uh, satisfy you emotionally or to, or, 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 or to gratify your senses. Prayer is responsibility. I don't pray because I want to feel good. Oh God, I'm going to say something like that. I don't pray because I want to feel better. I pray because I know that my words become a dark in the spirit of darkness. I pray because I know that I am affecting a plan that Satan has set in motion. Oh, come on somebody. I don't pray so I can feel better. Because it's not your feelings that affects the enemy. Oh, Jesus. You can't walk away from prayer just, just saying, I, I just feel like I got the victory. You have to walk away from prayer knowing that you have the victory. Oh, come on, somebody. You have to walk away from prayer knowing that you have the victory because you prayed, not because you feel better. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you look at, you know, the will of God for prayer and the way that God has called us to pray. And I know we have, we have been uh, so blessed uh, in this uh, past 12, 13, 14 weeks in, in the prayer revival. And so the reviving of prayer, the reviving of prayer is to provoke you to desire to pray by seeing the supernatural and the manifestation of the glory of God. And that's what we experience. You know, the Lord dealt with me about who he wanted me to bring in because he wanted us to see the manifestations of the glory of God. But the bottom line of it is, is that, you know, do we really understand what that power is? I was telling the people um, on Sunday as the Lord began to give it to me that the effective prayer and the, and the moving of the spirit of God, you know, we, we, we do get excited about the spirit of the Lord and the movement of God, but we need to understand how that movement works. You know, that's not, that's not just given to a powerful person to uh, exude the glory. You know, the Lord just doesn't, God doesn't operate like that. He just doesn't pick people out and just say, you know what, I like you. So I'm just going to give you so much power and just, you're going to be able to do stuff that don't nobody else do. That's not God's way. Oh, Jesus. God doesn't have favorites and, 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 and God, God, God is not partial. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't give to one without giving to the other. He makes accessible a wisdom and a knowledge that only a few grab through prayer. Come on, somebody. What you see me do in prayer and how you see God use me, how you see the Lord use Bishop Duncan Williams, think that not to be special because that could be you. 
There's nothing so special about us that, that, that God would use us in that manner that, that, that makes you subservient to us. I'm, 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 maybe I'm going to get somebody to, I'm going to get somebody to want this. You can operate in it too. Oh, Jesus. Do you not know that there are people that are in this building that have the potential to, to, to far surpass what God has called me to do? But see, this, this generation is on a whim about prayer and a whim about the spirit realm. And I told you before, the main mechanism, the main ingredient to prayer is that the spirit of the Lord, and I want you to hear this very clearly, it is illegal for the spirit of the Lord to operate or move without his word. I'm going to say that one more time. It is illegal for the spirit of the Lord to operate and move without his word. Because he said, me and my word, they are one. It's one. So one can't run off without the other. Yeah, but prophet said, well, what does that have to do with, you know, what does that have to do with where we are now? And what does it have to do with prayer? I was saying to the people this Sunday, I said, you know what? I said, I can, I can come in this building today and just, you know, give one of y'all the keys to my Rolls Royce. And you just be just happy and just jumping and shouting. But you know what? Because it is an expensive car and because it's not like any other car, because it's in a whole other league of its own, it doesn't start up the same way. It doesn't have the key like regular keys. You can't put it in gear like you put it. You know, I had a girl to drive me doing, doing the conference and, and I said to her, you know, she kept grabbing the gear shift and trying to pull it down. And I said, you don't pull it down. I said, you just grab your finger and pull it to you and pop it and it goes into gear. But see, I had to learn that by reading the manual. When Elder Boyd took me to the place uh, for me to get my car, you know, I was, I was looking at the car and I was excited about the car. But, you know, Elder Boyd asked the man, well, how do you start it? <laughs> well, where's the key at? Because it wasn't stuck on the right side of the ignition with a key that has grooves in it. It's a square box. You stick it in a hole and push a button and it starts like that. But if we have never read the manual, then all I got is a precious gift, but it can't take me nowhere. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody say that right now. If I were to give you the keys, you would dance and shout, but you could not get up the block because you don't have the manual. And that's where we are now. We got gifts and we jumping and shouting, but we can't go anywhere. And the first time we see somebody else being able to go anywhere, we make them a superstar. But what God is trying to tell you, you got to get to know the manual or else all you will have is a gift. Oh, Jesus. And when the gift is gone, you won't come to prayer. You let me take five more weeks and not show up in prayer. You would disappear because it's the gifts that you want. You don't know the manual. You don't know that what is in that lap of yours, those pages right there, if you ever get it in your spirit, any one of y'all can get up here and start a prayer revival. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. just a gift it's just a great car remember I got in the car one time and the little the little lady on the thing was gone the girl came out and she said brothers I think you better come out here because somebody then I think they done broke your broke that little lady off because you know it won't come up you're supposed to start the car the lady come up I went inside the door and I got the manual and I started going through the manual is like a thick book like that and so I found where you have to reset it and get the lady to pop out. And so I said, you know, it's all right. And I said, okay, you know, something else wouldn't start or whatever, whatever. And I said, okay, I'm, I, I don't know where this is. I went to the manual. And then I remember one day I was driving down the street and I was just driving and music loud and just, you know, coming from an appointment. And all of a sudden they came up on the screen, flat tire. Well, I didn't feel no flat tire. I said, I, I, you, know, I, I, you know, you have a flat tire. You feel it bumping, bumping, bumping. I didn't feel nothing like that. And I said, well, you know, the, the screen is saying I got a flat tire. And so then I kept going. You know, I just mashed the accelerator. And then the whole car just started slowing down. And I said, okay. So I pulled over on the side and I put the hazards on. I got out and I went around the whole car and I looked and I didn't see no flat tire. And I said, well, 
you know, well, something is wrong. So when I went to pull off again, the car started alarming. And so there's, 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 a, there's a button in the ceiling that's a black American Express card button. And when you push that button, the lady came on and she said, good afternoon, Dr. Bynum, how are you? And I said, I'm fine. Now, this lady is in Dallas, Texas. And I said, I'm doing fine. She said, um, I see that your meter is reading that you have a flat tire. What you have is a bubble in your left tire. You can go X amount of thousands of miles or we can have somebody to come and get you. You are on the side of the road. You are on this particular parkway. You are going 85 South and you are at the exit. And she named the exit for me. And I'm looking up in the ceiling and I said, well, how did you know that? She said, we have everything about this car programmed in a system. Anything that breaks down, we can tell you already what it is. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, that's what the Bible does. That's what the word of God does. Some of y'all talk about, oh God, you in prayer. Don't you see me, Lord? Don't you know what I'm going through? When you have the manual, it's, it's, a, it's a divine mechanism in heaven. He knows where you are. He knows you ain't lost. He can tell you where you are. He can tell you what the problem is. He can tell you that you can keep going. Oh, somebody said that's good. Somebody said that's good. The word of God is a locator. And without it, we're going nowhere. God, I wish I had somebody to say something right there. That is the power of God. The word of God is the power of God. If you don't spend time in his word, you have no power. I didn't have to say, will you send a tow truck? Will you send a tow truck to, because to, they, don't, they don't send tow trucks for cars like that. They send a, a whole flatbed system. Oh, y'all, come on. And see, a lot of people say, you know, I want the power, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up because I just want power with God. I just want God to just really do it in my life. Let me tell you something, power with God is expensive. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. I said power with God is expensive. It is costly. Oh, I'm not trying to excite you today. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to get you excited. I'm trying to help you. It's expensive. I remember when I finally went to the dealership to get the car fixed and get the little tire fixed. Sister Kelly, I just went pouncing on up in there. And, and they said, well, we going, you know, you need a new tire. And I said, okay. So they took the car around there and put the tire on. And I said, let's go cross the street and get something to eat. And I went across the street and got me something to eat and pounced on back. And I got, the, lady, the man said, take this. Uh, slip and go to the window and I went to the window and the lady said $2,200 I said what well, you and I looked around like you talking to me you, you, you got I didn't have an engine put in I just this is a flat tire they, get the manager I said get the manager I said sir there has got to be some mistake here no you listen I is I, I, my, oh, everything is under warranty you got to be kidding me I cannot listen sir it, it's just a flat tire and then I said where is my spare tire he said well there is no spare tire to the Rose Rose I said wait a minute you, well where is my extra tire or something you saying it's twenty two hundred dollars okay all my food wanted to come up and I used to be pouncing around town, Val, and just driving. I took that car home and parked that car. I said, no, it ain't moving until it's got to be something special. I start calling people for a ride. No, can you take me in your broke down car? I don't care. Jerry, bring your raggedy Cadillac because I can't do this. See, because a lot of us think we want this thing called the power in prayer. But you know what? It's a price you got to pay. And it costs more than anything else that you can desire. It's more expensive than being a preacher. It's more expensive than being an evangelist. It's more expensive than being a prophet. Because power with God is knowing his word. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, let me just read this scripture. This. My God, my God. And we don't have that. We don't have that, Pastor. We don't have that. We don't have that, man. We have a bunch of people that, that, that there's love. You got people that are in love with the anointing. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. You got people that's in love with the anointing. When the anointing starts moving, the power starts moving, they just, 
flip over backwards. I ain't got time to read their word. I told you if I walked in this room right now and went from row to row, you see more blank pages. You see no notes. Because we look for the spirit to do it all. You ain't saying that. Let me tell you what you get. Let me tell you what you get. When you have no word foundation, all you get is his presence. But you don't get the operation of the spirit. In the beginning, when he stepped out in creation and he created everything, he spoke it, then the spirit moved. He spoke it, then the spirit moved. He spoke it, he said, let there be light. There was light. God just didn't step out in the middle of nowhere and just start blowing and ooing and on and whistling and everything just start coming. <laughs> what am I trying to say? <laughs> Ain't enough. God, I love you today, Jesus. I love you today, Jesus. I love you today, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. It ain't breaking nothing. Oh, who am I talking to right there? My, my, my. Hey, you're not getting nothing done because there is no word in you. There has to be a spoken word before the spirit moves. He didn't step out in creation and go. There come fish. He didn't go. And there was the earth. He spoke it. And then the spirit moved. Oh, y'all, come on. You don't have credentials to get that done. You got enough energy, but you don't have credentials. And if you don't get credentials, you're going to be spinning your wheels. You're going to get disgusted about prayer. Oh, come on, somebody. You're going to get weary about prayer. You're not going to want to come to prayer. Because you don't see any results. Oh, y'all, come on. It didn't say he stepped out in creation and spoke it and then 10 weeks later it came. Okay, God's trying to show us something today. He's trying to show us something today. He's trying to show us the power of the right now. Because I don't know about you, but some things I don't have time for him to wait on. I, I, I'm talking about the power of the right now. I'm talking about and while you speaking it, it's coming to pass. I'm talking about while you speaking it out of your mouth. God's got ministry to angels and it's going into operation. That's the kind of authority he wants to give us. The weight is because he can't do it without his word. I'm waiting on God. I'm just, I want to help somebody today. I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting. Honey, I'm just going to wait right here on God. I'm going to wait till God do it. Well, you're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. Okay. That's just like, if you would allow me to give you this example. That's just like, that's just like, you know, I told you it takes, it takes 15 scriptures to get something done. And you got two. You can command and hot and scream all you want to. There's an ingredient. There's an ingredient to making a cake. I ain't hear nobody say nothing to me. I ain't hear nobody talk to me right there. I don't care what you do. You can, you can, I, and I don't know if you I, I told the people on Sunday, I said, you know, I don't know if you do this or not, but I do it. And it's, 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 it's ignorant, but, you know, I have to admit I do that. You go to family reunions and stuff like that, and people cooking, you know, it's time to eat. I just walk up to the table, just naming names. Who made this pie? <laughs> well, okay, who made this chicken? Well, who cooked the potato? I don't want her potato salad. I want Aunt Ruby's potato salad. I want, uh-uh, no, I want my mama's chicken. Whip. That chicken look good. If I, well, honey, so I don't know nothing about her frying chicken. Give me, I want my mama, I already know what I want. I want my mama's chicken. I want my mama's greens. I want Aunt Ruby's uh, dressing. I want Teresa's potato salad. I want my mama's sweet potato pie. Y'all are saying that. And that's my meal. Don't be giving me nothing that I don't know nothing about. Ain't, ain't, ain't Earl. I, no, I don't want her stuff. And you walk up to her and say, mm-mm, that don't look good. I don't, mm -mm, I don't want that. And said, I said, but that's really good. I don't want that. You know why? Because you learn that those people know how to put the right ingredients and stuff. And you already know what it's going to taste like. See, I'm trying to help you with prayer. Because you don't need to come into prayer wondering if God can do it. When the right ingredients is in your spirit, you're comfortable with it. And the first thing you're saying, I don't need my mama. I want God. I don't need to borrow no money. I'm going to wait on God right here. Oh, come on. You're doing just like I do that chicken. I don't want her 
my chicken. I want my mama's chicken. I don't want your help. I'm going to look to the hills for which cometh my help because my help cometh from the Lord because I have the right ingredients. I'm trying to help you be powerful by yourself. I'm trying to help you be powerful in your kitchen. I'm trying to help you bind the enemy up in your own family and tell him to go and he has to go. Glory to God. He got to take his hands off. He got to take his hands off because of the authority that's in you. Some of us, well, I, well, well, I, you see, prophets, I, I'm, just, I'm just really, I just, I just travail, and I travail, and I travail, but you don't read. Now, I know I ain't, I ain't standing up here just turning no cartwheels, but I, I promise you I'm doing something. I promise you I'm doing something. See, just like when I was growing up, my grandma used to make a cake. And uh, now they got box cake. You don't know what's in it. You know, now, now, now you can just walk up to the table. You can run in from outside and walk to the table and bust a can up next to your counter and just poop. And it just go pop. I ain't never heard no biscuits already rising. It ain't even in the oven yet. Just, you just pop the can open and just ooze all out. And see, we satisfied. We love them kind of biscuits because you ain't never tasted a homemade biscuit. Okay, I ain't going to play with that right there. You ain't never had no old church mother to take some yeast and, 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 and some flour. And see, and see, the butter got to sit all night. Sometimes they let it sit for two days. Y'all ain't saying that. And they put that thing together. And they put, you ever tasted a real homemade roll? You would leave Pillsbury alone. I, I don't want no Pillsbury. And see, that's what's wrong with us in this generation. We ain't never taste no real biscuit. So we shot over Pillsbury. And now they putting glaze on it. They give you a little package of glaze to put on it. Because you ain't never had no real, no real biscuit. So you shot over anything. Oh, I ain't hit nobody. All you want God to do is pop it open in the can. But that's why the Lord has allowed your family and you to be struck with certain circumstances. So to tell you that Pillsbury prayer is not going to do it this time. You ain't going to be able to walk it in, hit the side of the counter, hit the side of the altar, and poop, it pop open, and there is your deliverance. Tell somebody this one's going to have to be homemade. Okay. You're going to have to let that butter sit. Y'all looking at me today like, okay, okay, okay. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to make it, make it really plain to you. And that's why, and that's why we, got, we, got, we got cakes, as the old folks said, we got cakes that's done fell in the oven. Y'all ain't never heard that, because y'all, my grandmother be making the cake, and she put all the ingredients in their mother, and she get it all done, and she stick it in the oven, and then she yell in the front room, don't y'all run through here, because y'all going to make my cake fall. I ain't hear nobody talk to me right there. See, it, it, you know what? It, it, just, it just don't pay. I have stuff that I have to do and, 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 and things that I, got, I get called to that, that, that people can only see me on these particular days and things that God is doing. And, it, and, I, and Pastor, it don't pay for me to miss prayer. Because when I come back and it's like people just, what's wrong with you? We just get too high. See, my mom used to tell us that all the time. You know, no, you ain't having company no more because you just, you show out. <laughs> and see, we was the kind of kids, we didn't have a lot of company. And we get cousins and stuff, we be jumping and doing stuff and breaking stuff and all in the stuff. And mama said, see, that's why people, I just, why, that's the reason why right there. I don't let you have company because you show out and then you don't know how to act when folk go home. And that's what we're talking about. We gonna be having prayer revival and then we bring folk in and you show out. Because then you want everybody to pray for you. And you won't just blow on me. Do it for me. Do it for me. Because see, when I'm here, I don't do it for you. You do it for you. Okay. I'm going to 
gonna tell somebody, Mama, oh no, nah, it's time to go back, it, it, wake up, snap out of it. Company gone. Company gone. Now what you gonna do? Now that you done seen what God can do, what are you gonna do? I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. I said, now that you've seen the miracles, God can work. Where is your miracle? I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Because what I'm trying to help you with is you can't take me home. You can't take Bishop Williams home. They're not going to be in your car and on your job if you don't get the power of God in your spirit for yourself. I just want somebody to say amen right there. I just want somebody to say, you talking to me, prophetess, today. Today you talking to me. See, this ain't no popcorn thing. And we keep waiting. I keep getting the feeling that we keep waiting to, 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 to get somewhere. You know, it's like, you know how you, how you finish something? It's finished now. When you call to prayer, that's eternal. Okay. When I do this, it's go. This is eternal. This is your life now. You can't never go back. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. You will never be free. You can stop coming to this building, but I promise you that the Holy Ghost will chase you down wherever you at. You can move to Texas, and He'll still wake you up. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying? You try not to pray no more. He will allow circumstances to come up in your life that will pull you back to your knees. This is not an event. This is a lifestyle. It's like people. Y'all sit down because I said I didn't want to excite us. It's a lifestyle. This ain't what you do on Tuesdays. This is who you are. I don't do this on Tuesdays. This is who I am. Oh God, I come Tuesdays because this God calls me to mark the spot here. The reason why he got me coming here for a season in my life is because this is the place that he's trying to establish my beginnings. He's trying to declare in this place is where I laid my life down to call my life to prayer. Who am I preaching to right there? Oh my God. Have you ever missed prayer? And you at home? And you oversleep and realize that you oversleep. You wake up going, what time? Is? Oh, Lord, I done missed prayer. And you say, well, I'm going back to sleep. Try it. Every 10 minutes. Hey, hey. That is the worst feeling in the world because you feel like somebody that's got sleep deprivation and can't go. And, and you be sitting up going. Thank you, Jesus. Then you get too deep and if, if it sounds like something fell off the shelf. <laughs> See, that's the difference between you and some other people. Because to some people, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a high. It's hype. You don't hear what I'm saying. It's prophetess. It ain't prayer. The wrong P. God have mercy. See, we got to get this thing right. Because it's, like, it's just like grandma's cake. It ain't no, it ain't no box ingredients. You got to get that butter. You got to let the butter sit there for a while. You got to get the right amount of flour. You got to get the right amount of baking powder. You got to get, because, you know, and the worst thing in the world is to make a cake and forget the sugar. Because some of y'all pray, but you ain't sweet. You don't speak. You ain't nice. Walk in church is be God, ble God bless you. How are you? Praise the Lord. You done forgot the sugar. You got a big old swollen up cake with icing and it, it no sugar. Oh, I 
ain't hearing y'all talk back to me. I ain't hearing y'all talk back to me. No baking soda, you can't hold it together. No butter, it's dry. Oh, y'all, come on, somebody. Prayer is a spiritual art. It is a glorious thing. It is a beautiful thing when it is done right. It's a chore to people that don't have the right ingredients to make it work. My God. It's a task to you. Somebody said, well, how do you get up and how do you, how do you do that? And don't, and you just, you just pray and then, and don't, I mean, just, I just feel so, uh, because I see results. I was praying for one of my aunts uh, a week ago and she has uh, congested heart failure and they had her on oxygen. And when I went to my sister's wedding, they had her all hooked up to oxygen tanks and all of that. And when I saw that, I went back home and I prayed for her. I got a text yesterday that said, I want to tell you that they took mama completely off oxygen. See, that's what I'm talking about. Prayer changes everything. When you have the right ingredients, when you speak the word of God, he cannot ignore his word. He said, my word, it is my word that shall not return unto me void. Oh, y'all, that's the key right there. Speak his word. Speak his word in your circumstance. Speak his word over your family. Speak his word when you pray because that's the thing that cannot come back to him void. pray let me just read this so I can go that ain't no joke right there no manual and all you can do is tell people come that's all I could say if I didn't have the manual pastor all I could tell people is that come see my car in my garage come see it because I can't drive it nowhere. And that's what this building becomes if you don't be careful. It becomes the Rolls Royce that's in a building. You can't drive it when you leave here. Okay. You can't send it to heal the sick. You can't use it to raise the dead. You can't use it to cast demons out. You can only come in here and shout and enjoy it. What sense does that make to keep coming to a building? And step outside that door. I'm sick. Call the doctor. What sense does that make? You in here calling the doctor. Hey, that was God. I believe you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the way to the back door. As soon as you go outside the door. What's wrong with you? All that power in here. And tomorrow morning, hey girl, how you doing? This is Sister Robinson. Can you just loan me $125 to pay my light bill until next week? Can't make it work outside of here. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Anymore. I just want somebody to say something to me. Can't do nothing with it. It can't take you down the street. Because you don't understand how it operates. Okay. You, don't, you don't even know how to protect it. Because you don't know the value of it. God, I love... This is, this is, uh, this is real powerful. I don't, I don't know if you understand that or not. You don't know what to do with it. So what does prayer do? I'm going to read this scripture and we're going to go. Ephesians 1 and 17 says, For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody have that? If you got to say, if you don't have it yet, raise your hand. If you turn into it right now, because I want you to see that. Because we're going to, we're going to start praying. That's our new assignment. We're going to start praying the word. That's our new turn in prayer. 
If anybody else ready for it? We're going to start praying the scripture that we read until we see God do what he said he's going to do. Somebody said there's a new plan. It says, for I always pray to the Lord God of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Did you all see that? I'm going to read that right there and I'm stopping for today. He said, the reason why I pray is that the Lord would grant me wisdom and insight. Are you hearing that? Revelation into the knowledge of him. Not just into the mysteries and in having insight for stuff. He said the reason why we pray is that the Lord would enlighten our eyes and give us insight. So when we put our eyes on this word, we receive the revelation of the authority of its power. So when we do go and pray, we're praying with a different level of authority. We're praying knowing what this means. Oh God. See, when he gives you insight into the knowledge of who he is, then you pray from a different place. You don't pray God will you. You pray God I command you to. Oh come on somebody. You don't tell the devil I wish you would go. You tell him I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. Now why do you say in the name of Jesus with such authority? Because I've been given insight on the knowledge of him. I know what he can and cannot do. I know there is no failure in him. I know the power in his name. This is why I pray. I pray to have all carnality move from my mind. I pray to have the spirit of carnality move the world system move out of my spirit so when I come into prayer and I pray my spirit becomes enlightened with his word all of a sudden I don't know if this happened to you but when I start praying and I know what I'm beginning to type the realm I hear scriptures start to unfold in my spirit because the Lord is trying to let me know you can't fight this with your English you gotta fight this with the word and when I hear the word come up in my spirit I begin to speak in tongues what am I doing when the word comes up and the spirit joins the word then I get results that's when I get the victory I start hearing them scriptures come up when I was up there and I was praying and you pray in English and you pray what you know to pray but when I heard that word hit my spirit and I heard the scriptures coming that's when I start praying in tongues because then I knew that my answer is here oh y'all come on somebody I'm not praying, God, will you give me an answer? You get the answer out of your spirit before you see a manifestation of it. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me right there. You should be able to hear the answer in your spirit. That's the thing that sends you to the next level. I don't know if anybody experienced that. You come in here and you start praying and you will hear the Holy Ghost say, be still. And that way when all chaos start breaking out around you, you don't get upset because you know what? You have the answer in your spirit. That's why you pray. You pray for God to open up your spirit, man, and give you knowledge about your circumstance. That's why you don't have a breakdown like everybody else. That's why you haven't killed yourself over your circumstance because you have insight. Somebody said to me this past week, well, you know what? All this stuff, I mean, this was one of those weeks. And they said, well, you know what? You are really calm. I said, because I know what God said. They say, you are really, you are really just you sure you all right? That's what Lisa said to me. She kept texting me. Are you okay? I said, yes, I'm okay. Are you sure? And the next day I got another text. Are you okay? And see, when all of stuff like that start happening, because I have insight and revelations into the mysteries of who he is, Instead of you pulling back, you go forward. Now, I just helped somebody right there. Now, that was a word for somebody right there. When you see it get chaotic, instead of pulling back and shutting down, you go forward. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. I don't hear nobody say nothing right there. When the enemy attacks your plan and it looks like it's falling apart, you drive further. 
No, you don't say, well, I might as well stop. Well, maybe this ain't God. Well, maybe. No, 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 no. Because at that point, God is up to something. Oh, come on, somebody. At that point, your test, and this is just a test, and you got to persevere past it because what God's trying to find out is do you believe me when it's going good? Do you believe me when everything is lining up right? Or do you just believe me in spite of what you see? I'm not hearing nobody say that right there. You got to get to a place in God that when God tells you something, I don't care what happens. You stand on what God said. I'm all right. I picked up the phone to call my office. I said, do this, do this, do this. Do. Well, we doing it. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. That's exactly what we're going to do. Well, I don't, I don't know if it, well, I, I don't know if it's going to work. I said, that's why he called me to do it. That's why, watch my lips. It's my ministry. I'm helping y'all. I'm helping somebody right there. And you keep on trying to make somebody else help you do it when it's your, when it's your responsibility. It's your vision. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. What God did that's, that's why sometimes you can't share with other people what God has given you. Because they don't know how to drive what God has given you. Who am I talking to right now? Listen, let me tell you something. God ain't giving you no Chevy and no Dodge Cadillac. The Holy Ghost, what he's about to do in your life, it's at the level of a Rolls Royce and a person that catch the bus will never understand how to drive what God has given you. Y'all sit down. Let me just say this and I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I pulled up to the hotel yesterday, Sunday, and um, I had to do a, 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 a photo shoot. And I, I pulled up to the hotel because they was going to shoot it in this, in this suite with me and my father. And so I pulled up outside, and it was a place that I, I've stayed in before when I did my conferences in Atlanta. And so when I pulled up, uh, the little guy, all the little guys just run to the car, you know, and, and they, they ran and opened the door, and they said, uh, you know, uh, you checking in? And I said, I'm already checked in. And the guy, you know, was getting ready to help me out the car, and I said, where do you want me to park it? Because you're not driving my car. Matter of fact, here's your $20 tip already for nothing. And so when I got ready to pull it up in the parking space where I always park it at, he said, uh, you got to leave your keys. I said, I'm not giving you my keys. So then he, he going, he going, now he, 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 he clown real bad that day. And he was like, well, well, well it's against the law. And it's a fire hazard. You're going to have to leave your keys. And so... You know, when he started getting all loud with me and stuff, so, you know, people coming out, you know, and so he created a little scene there. So I was like, I'm not leaving you my keys. So he went and got the manager. Manager, come. come. It was a big exclusive hotel, and they had a, they had a silver Rolls Royce parked on the side, and the manager came out and said, well, it's a, it's a fire hazard, and you did, you, if you're going, you're going to have to, and I said, well, first of all, I just checked into a $3,000 suite, and I can check out. But you or him or none of y'all is getting ready to drive my car. And so he said, wait, wait, you, you leave your keys with them. I said, I'm not leaving my keys with them. I said, let me help you with something. I said, the last time I stayed here and left my keys with y'all, I said, I parked in a spot. I came down to have lunch with a friend of mine. My car was moved across the parking lot. I said, I came back downstairs to go to the store and to get some out of my car. They had moved it on the other side over there. I said, when I came back down to go to church, it was back in the same spot. I didn't hear a fire truck. There was no fire alarm. And I said, but you know what it is? They down here playing games about high drive. Next time, let me move it. Next time, I said, v, and I, turn, I turned around and pointed to the curb. I said, all of them catch the bus. They have no idea what I paid for this. This is not a $30,000 car. This is $400,000. Oh, you don't want to hear me. They don't understand the dimensions of this car. If they've never driven it before, they don't know how to turn. They don't know how wide you need to turn. So I'm not letting nobody who ain't paid nothing, you don't hear what I'm saying, but a bus ticket, get in my car and drive a Rolls Royce. Oh, who am I talking to? When you spend time in prayer and you spend time in his word, you don't let nobody turn around and tell you what God won't do and what God can't do. They don't know the dimensions. And 
you're going to always get somebody who don't go to prayer going to tell you, I just sense what? Shut up! Because you don't know the depths. You don't know the dimensions. You don't know prayer. You don't know my God. You can't tell me what God won't do. I'm not going to let you tell me what God won't do because you drive a Chevy in the spirit. people driving pintos in the Holy Ghost want to tell you and you know what I sense I didn't ask you y'all ain't saying nothing right there y'all sit down we gonna <laughs> y'all got somebody else to tell you what they think do you know how many hours I've spent in prayer do you know how long I prayed you can't be getting ready to stand on the side of the curb. Y- y- y'all ain't saying that. And so he said to me, the manager said to me, well, 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 you don't have to explain that to me because we have a rose rose. I said, and you have a rules too. And you don't let any one of them get the keys and just ride around this parking lot whenever they get ready to do you. He said, well, I guess you got a point. Well, uh, well, I guess you got a point. He said, well, what if I take your keys in my office? And, and I, I said, now you can hold my keys because you manage this whole building uh-huh, and you're responsible for that Rolls Royce out there which says to me, you get it, we here. Because if something happened to that one, you're going to lose your job. If something happened to this building, you're going to lose your job. That means you understand the weight of what I have. I can trust you to tell me something because you have the same responsibility I have. Who am I talking to right now? We always want to leave prayer and go to talk to somebody that don't understand the same responsibility that you have. They don't know about prayer. They don't know what it takes to get the job done. They don't have the intimate knowledge and wisdom. Oh my God. Am I helping anybody today? What you have is expensive. Okay. I ain't gonna say nothing else. I said, what you have is expensive. Do you know the virtue that you lose praying? Okay. Do you not know where you take your depths that you, that you physically take your body to? Statistics says that a preacher preaching a 20 minute message come closer to death than a woman having a baby. They said there's a certain point that a woman get to at the time of birth that there's a thin line between life and death. She can die instantly because of all of the pressure that goes on in the body right before the shoulders come out. They said a woman can die instantly at that very point. They said a preacher preaching a 20 minute message comes closer to death than a woman having a baby. And we are in here for two hours. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. I can't do this and don't see no results. I cannot come through those doors and pray like that and still tell about I'm waiting on God. You don't hear what I'm saying. God, I wish I had somebody to speak back to me right there. Then when the cake falls, you got to check the ingredients. When it come out heavy, you did something wrong. Come on now, y'all. Oh, I forgot. Half of them in here don't cook. Is everybody looking like, well, what you talking about heavy? Cause they used to eating a heavy cake because they think that's what it tastes like. We didn't grow up with no bunt cakes. You know the bunt cake pan with the hole in it? My grandma didn't cook no cakes like that. They cook round cakes. They ain't have no hole in the cake. You can smell that cake two days later in that kitchen. 
You walk in there, Val Valerie's aunt cooked one for my 40th birthday. She made me a coconut pineapple cake that I have just not forgotten out of my soul. <laughs> when I came in the kitchen, they had ate the leg. I was ready to fight everybody in that kitchen. I mean, that cake was just so light and it's, oh, it just smelled so good. It just had the whole kitchen smelling. When you put it in your mouth, it just melted. I mean, just melted. I'm 47. That was for my 40th birthday. I can see that cake right now. And I've been asking her ever since my 40th birthday, can you ask your Aunt Velma if she can make me a cake one more time? Just one more time. Just like, something big got to happen, but I just got... You, when that cake is made right, it's just... It, and it just fall apart. You just... It's the kind of cake that you mash it. And it just... Yeah. You got people making cakes now, you got to carve through it. You supposed to be able to mash that cake and it pop back up. You mashing your whole handprint just stay there. So I don't want to okay, I'm gonna give you a real good good example of the kind of cake I'm talking about. Christmas fruit cake. It be in the kitchen for just months. I don't know who made that. Whoever made that need to be shot. God gonna judge them for that recipe. And every year they would bring that Christmas cake and the thing that's so bad, it smells so good in the kitchen. And it just, and you, you try to trick yourself and say, well, just let me just try. Maybe it'll taste different just today. Because you just be wanting it so bad because it smells so good. But that is the nastiest cake. Who thought of that? All that hard twisted fruit and nuts and the cake part be thick. And it smells so good, it just keep making you want it. But when you eat it, it don't taste good. And that's how it is when you pray without the word. It just smells good. But you know it's nasty. You know ain't nothing to come on somebody. You know you ain't got no results behind it. You just keep hoping that if you eat it this time, you will start liking it. And every year for Christmas, they buy the same cake, knowing that we ain't going to eat it. When I see it come in the mail from my daddy's boss and I see that round can, I said, this is that. Why do they keep sending the same old, this same old fruit cake? This thing ain't good. Read it until God speaks something out of it for you. Because when we come back Tuesday, that's what we're going to do. We're going to pray Ephesians. We're going to pray Ephesians over people. We're going to pray Ephesians over circumstances. Come on, somebody. We're going to get some results. You're going to shock yourself. You're going to walk up to one of your demon-possessed cousins and say that, and they're going to hit the floor, and you're going to say, uh-oh. Okay, I'm Duncan Williams now. Something that happened. <laughs> You're going to walk in the next family reunion and say, Satan, come out through now. And your whole family going to hit the floor. You're going to say, it's on now. You're going to walk to the next family reunion and tell them, 
Everybody, get ready. They're going to say, what's wrong with her voice done changed? I command you by the power of Yeshua. I command every last one of these people to come out now. And everybody in going to stop. You're going to say, oh, shoot now. I got it now. Somebody clap your hands with Jesus. I break your bones. I command you to come up now. Your little boy going to just start throwing up. Mind you in the name of Jesus to take that earring out of your nose. Your daughter gonna be saying, I'm sorry, mama, I don't know what. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so what are we striving for? We are striving for the God of Africa. We want that kind of authority. We want the God of Yeshua. <laughs> we are leading the country in this prayer. We are leading America. We are now in Africa. The prayer that brings results. Somebody give God a shout. Come on, how many people want it? I said give God a shout. I'm talking about shout with authority. All of the Nazarites to bring the Lord a seed. I'm telling you, we own to something. We own to something. Elder boy can tell you, Valley boy can tell you, for, for 10 years in my basement, doing my 5 a.m. prayer in the mornings, I, that's what I prayed. They'll tell you. I said, God, I want the God of Africa. I want the God of Africa. I want the God of Africa. And that's why when I looked around and, you know, people would say, you know, I didn't want ministry that I had seen before. And they would say, your ministry is different, is, 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 is different than any other ministry in the United States. And I didn't understand it until I went to Africa. And I knew then the Lord had granted my request that the way I persevere in prayer, the way I praise him, the way I preach is of the African nature. It is not of America. I don't have an Americanized ministry. And so I know for a fact that we can receive the transference of that kind of authority if you want it. And that's the level. God brought the man of God here and I, what the Lord showed me about his visit is that he would come and impart that level and that desire into you all the way the Lord did it for me. Amen, somebody. The way God did it for me. And so now that's the level we're going to. We have to take us ourselves to that level. If not, we'll get stuck praying like Americans. And praying spoiled. And praying a little bit and just getting tired and <coughs> my throat hurt today. I I'm just going to pray a little bit. 20 minutes later, you, you, you just exhausted. Come on, somebody. You got to get to the gym and get yourself ready. Because we're getting ready to war in the spirit. Come on, somebody. We getting ready to be transformed. You talking about power and authority? You wait till you start getting that word level down and you right. That thing will charge you to another level and have you praying for five hours and you think you've only been praying for 15 minutes because the word brings about supernatural strength. It brings about supernatural power. That is your fuel to get the job done. Somebody said the word is my fuel. You watch. You watch. You read Ephesians three times this week. You watch the difference in your level of prayer. You watch the difference in your level of strength to pray. Come on, somebody. God is a good God. Come on, all the Nazarites. And Levites that will give God a seed offering. Come on, let's do that quickly so we can go. We honor the Lord for Pastor Reuben being here today. Having seen him in such a long time. Somebody put your hands together for Pastor Reuben. And for Pastor Hubbard being here. Pastor Hubbard, stand up. They don't know who you are. Powerful young man in God. Somebody give God a praise for him. I 
know Bishop Williams didn't have time to just really bring all that he wanted to bring, but we have, we talk all the time on the phone and he was saying to me, he said, I have never in all of my days coming to America ever seen or heard of any prayer meeting like what I have experienced at your church. He said, I did not even know that people even understood even the level of where we were. He said, I was impressed that the people of God had such tenacity in the spirit. He said, and you don't find that in America. And he said, there were things that I didn't even know that you knew how to operate in. Americans didn't even know that. And he said, where did you get that from? I said, prayer. I said, God taught me. The Bible said he teaches your hands to war. He teaches you how to warfare. I said, I didn't have a teacher. I didn't have anybody to show me. He said, some of the things that you do and demonstrate in the spirit and the way you pray. He said, that, those are systems. Those are systems and mysteries that only Africans know about the spirit realm. I said, God taught me. God taught me. And the Lord had me to bring him here so that we can get a taste. So that we can go to our next level. Because sometimes when you just think it's me, you say, well, you know, prophets just really put, but when you see somebody else, it's like, okay, there, there's something to this. There's something that God is doing in the spirit realm. There is another level for real. How many people learned that? That there is another level of authority. There is another level of power that God wants us to come into. And he don't want us to sit in our seats and be entertained by that power. He wants you to be able to walk in it yourself. He wants you to be able to speak to situations and circumstances and the enemy know he is bound and bound forever. He knows that he has not defeated your cause. He has not altered your destiny. Not one little bit. But all he's done is given you the fuel that you need to drive forward. Somebody say, I'm driving forward. No, I need to hear some people say that. Because I sent some people been through some warfare this week. You tell the devil, I'm driving forward. Tell them you shouldn't have never put your hands on this because I'm driving for it. What you do? Come quickly and give the Lord a seed. Come quickly, all the Levites. Come quickly. And we want to go back to. We want to go back to that. We want to go back to that. I know we've been in revival and it's going to take you several weeks to recuperate yourself, but. We make our commitments to the Lord in our seed offering and that's where we should remain. And don't let it change us. You are Velma's daughter. Tell your mama I want a cake. This that lady's daughter right here. Her mama make that. Tell your mama please. Tell her I got nine months and three days. <laughs> I'm on this vow but I ain't crazy. I told him I said baby. When that day is up, that morning, I'm going to be parked right in front of the pizza place. At my favorite pizza place. I said, they're going to look out there and see my car and say, what is wrong? When the man come in, I'm going to say, get on in there. And the first pizza that come out that oven, you better bring it right out here to this car. Matter of fact, here's your $20. I'm going to already pay you. <laughs> Tell your mom I got nine months and about two days. Some of y'all done been broke, y'all, Val. I ain't broke it. I haven't broke it. I was in the restaurant last night, and I looked up and saw that big old cake. I said, nine months and two days. Coming for you. I ain't broke it. I ain't broke it. I'm not going to break it. Because I'm seeing God do. I don't know about y'all, but I'm seeing quick results. Anybody else seeing results? I'm seeing some powerful stuff happen since I've been on this vow. Stuff that would never break, breakthroughs that would never break through, they breaking through. Hallelujah! I'm not going to break it. I haven't seen God do too much. Many of you that haven't made the Lord a year vow. I made, we made this vow to the Lord. And I said, I don't care. And the pressure gets strong and you be wanting to go get a cake or something. Just go get me some pizza. But the Lord already let me know if you cheat, 
the day you cheat starts a whole nother year because you're going to keep your word. Amen, somebody. I'm so tired of eating fish. I'm so tired. I'm just, it's like, God, help me, Jesus. I'm so tired of eating vegetables and... You know what I'm saying? I just want a good old piece of candy. Just, Lord Jesus. But I don't want that better than I want what I have on my list. I'm willing to pay the price. See, this is what takes you out. It separates, you know, the, 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 the girls from the women and the boys from the men. Because anybody can go on a seven-day fast. Anybody can give them three days, Pastor Ruth. But when you tell the Lord for a whole year, I'm not touching no chicken, no beef, no pork, no turkey, no cookies, no candy, no white flour, no sugar, no sodas. For a whole year, God, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll make that sacrifice. Because I know the power of the vow brings another level of the anointing. When there's a vow on your life, it brings about the supernatural. I reread that again in prayer the other day when the Lord spoke to Samson's mother and said, as long as he doesn't touch any unclean thing, don't eat any unclean thing, don't drink any strong drink, let no razor come to his head, he would be the deliverer. And as long as Samson kept that vow over his life, he operated in supernatural powers that no other man had. That's what I'm after. That's what my vow is all about. To be able to operate in supernatural powers that is beyond the human realm. To be able to accomplish stuff that I would have never been able to accomplish in my human strength. That's why I'm doing the vow. And when the Lord has vowed upon you and you make a vow, there's a match in the spirit. That's double power. Come on, somebody. That's authority with God. So if you have not made God a vow, you need to go home and pray about it. And those of you that have, raise your hand that's kept your vow. We're praying together. We're standing in covenant. Amen, somebody. Standing in covenant. Because God is going to do it. He's going to do just what he said. Everybody else, get God a seat in your hand. Get a seat in your hand. All of our Levites, we're asking our Levites to sow the Lord a $100 seed offering. And give it to the Lord every Tuesday. We're asking Levites to make a vow that you would give the Lord a $50 seed offering. And that's what it is. It's a vow before the Lord. In your personal life as well as your seed life. Amen, somebody. God is good in me. My God, I love him. How many learned something today? How many, how many understood some stuff today? That's why the devil don't want you to read your Bible. He'll run you all over town. He'll get you up in the morning and have you running all day long. And then you get home and get ready to go to bed, you're too sleepy to read it. Because he know as long as you ain't got that, you ain't got nothing but a pretty car. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going to be able to cast him out. You ain't going to be able to break his powers. So he'll let you go to church. He'll let you go to prayer. He'll let you hold your back and scream and holler and spit and travail. But without the word, you ain't going nowhere. And that takes time and discipline. It takes you making yourself. On your lunch break. Okay, well, I ain't going to eat today because I'm getting ready to read. It makes you get up in that morning, that morning hour and say, you know what? I ain't going nowhere. Sometimes you get up and say, I'm going to bathroom, take a shower, da, 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 and then I'm going to read. Then you start doing other stuff. Then the news catch you. Then USA Today catch you. Come on, somebody. Everything catch you but the word. And sometimes you got to wake up in the morning and say, I ain't getting my end out this bed till I read. I'm reading right now. Because it's the word of God that's going to keep me alive. It's not your tapes playing in your car. And you hear music. That song just really blessed me. That ain't going to do it. That's the icing. That ain't the cake. Come on somebody. Tell somebody I want some cake. Tell them I want a Velma's cake. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about right there. If that's what you want. You don't want no good icing. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't want no fruit cake either. Get the Lord a seed in your hand and bring it to the Lord. Lay it on this table today on this prayer cloth. All over the building, get a seed in your hand. Get a seed in your hand. All over the building, get a seed in your hand.
and stand to your feet and hop in the line. Give the Lord an offering. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Glory to your name, Jesus. That's right. Come all the way over to the center aisle. Come to the center aisle. Where did Elder Boy go? that lady that gave me this note it's too bad you wasn't you wasn't raised up in this church her note says while you're fasting what do you do do you pray all day and how can you fast while at work she need past the boy because baby we fasted with no water for seven days and went to work you understand Oh my God, you had to carry two brushes. We were so glad for that little water to hit your mouth. <laughs> we used to ask Pastor that you. Pastor would call fast. We would fast for seven days. And our first glass of water would be at church. And he would have water up there anointed. And he would give you your first cup of water. But we did it. And then there were times when he would call fast. And he called the six and the six. You get something to drink at six o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the evening. And he said, if you oversleep past six, you have missed your six o'clock drink. And I'd be up at four o'clock parked. We was trying to grind up everything and call it a juice. He said, we can have water and juice. Saints were trying to put steaks and blenders and everything. <laughs> At 6 o'clock, we drank that 6 o'clock juice. 6 a.m. And you couldn't have nothing else to drink. Not a cup of water. Am I right, brother? Not a cup of water. Nothing till 6 that evening. And you be jawjacking with somebody on the phone. and say, Oh, what time is it? You want to get that 6 o'clock drink. So we just did it. You know, and if God called you to do it, he sustains you for it. If the Lord called you to do it, he sustains you for it. And you just take your toothbrush in your purse, you feel your mouth getting a little stale, you go on in there and brush your teeth and come on back. But you fast. And this generation don't know nothing about that kind of fasting. They call them denials. I'm on a fast. I do one meal a day. That ain't no fast. Fast is when you go without completely. Come on, somebody. But we did it. And we fasted and prayed. Have you ever been on the third day of the fast? And somebody call you up to the microphone and tell you to pray for an hour? And you can't have nothing to drink when you get through. And Pastor was saying, You can't pray in tongues. I want you to pray English because I want to pray, I want to hear what's coming out your spirit. And we'd be lined up on the side because all different one of us, you know, Pastor Reuben and Dr. Wilson and, and, and Elder Boyd and uh, Brother Ron. There were certain ones of us that he, he knew he was going to call us to pray. And we'd be on the side just looking at each other like, oh, give us strength, God. Give him strength, Lord. And you pray. And when they come, we come off that platform, you actually have to have people just to hold you. About the fifth day of the fast, it was on a Friday. When I came to church, I was sitting right there where Brother Ruby was sitting. And I just had to lay down in the middle of the service on the seat. I couldn't even sit up. My, my body was just wrapped with so much pain. I just laid on the seat. And Pastor just walked over and just put his hands on my back and kept preaching. We did it. We did it. But that's why we walk in an authority of a these kind come out by much fasting and praying. It brings about a different level of authority. It 
God gives you to do it, he'll sustain you in it. Amen, somebody. And we come off that fast. If you ever want to see God move in a way that it would just, just take you out of here. I just want you to hear that Bethel been on the fast. And then come to service when the fast is over. After that first meal, it's Bethlehem in here. It is no stopping God in here. And that's what that authority is. And so you can fast. You can fast. And it's, a, and it's disciplines that you go to. You know, you know when the Lord is calling you to it. And when the Lord is calling you to it, you can do it. You know, and just you just have to watch your spirit and make sure you don't. Some people go mean. You just have to go kind. Started hollering at people when you can't get nothing to eat. As long as Pastor said we can fast and we can, he said with liquids, I was fine because I can have coffee. The minute he said nothing, a demon just roared out of me. Just, I turned into another person. No coffee. Oh, I can do 21 days as long as you let me have some coffee. <laughs> you said no coffee. That's a whole nother spirit. But you can do it. You can go to work. We went to work and, fa and we fasted a lot in this church. Every time we turn around, we go on another fast and another fast and another fast and another fast. But we did it. So you can work and fast. And you pray in your spirit. You, you remain prayerful. So on your breaks, that's your prayer time. On your lunch hour, instead of eating lunch, you eat your word. Before you leave work, you read your word. Because that's your strength that's going to get you home. You know, and when you feel your body getting, you know, physical and about the second day, second day is your headache day. Third day is your fatigue day. After the fourth day, you can go 21 days. How many? See, a lot of people don't, they, I don't see what a few people saying. That's right, prophets, because a lot of people ain't done it. But that's it. You always know that by your second day, you're going to feel sick. You're going to feel headache. And you make it through that second day. By the third day, you feel fatigued. That's when you feel like you're shaking a little bit and your legs is weak. And after that, because what's happened, the body is detoxing itself. The body is getting rid of all of the impurities. And it's starting to heal itself. It's starting to deliver itself. By the fourth day, you're going to feel energized. You can literally, seriously, go 21 days after your fourth day. Because the body now is functioning off of the purified uh, blood that's there. And it's just, it's just surviving. It's just surviving just on, on, on the sheer energy of the food you've already eaten, the minerals that's already in your body, and it literally starts to replenish yourself. By the eighth or ninth day, you start looking like a brand new person, skin glowing, everything. So, did I just help somebody right there? So you have to talk to yourself when you fast and say, okay, this that second day thing. Okay, this that third day thing. Okay, if I can just make it to my fourth day, I can make it. Because when you get to the fourth day, you know now you're on the victory side. Now you're doing some damage to the kingdom because you went past the travail of the body. And that's what fasting is, to get you past the travail of the body and get you over into the spirit realm. And that's when you start doing damage because now you're purified from within. You don't have any foreign substances coming in. You don't have all that stuff sending your emotions everywhere and sugar and all that kind of stuff. You functioning purely off of the strength of God. And that's a whole nother level of authority. So you can do it. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen again. Where's Elder Boyd? Somebody put your hands together for Elder Boyd who has been. Don't we thank God for him? Don't we thank God for him? We appreciate the Lord for you, Elder Boyd. Just holding it down and, you know, and the people need to know that when I'm not here, I'm not somewhere clicking my heels together and saying well oh, i just need a break you know I'm, I'm doing i flew in last night and had to go to a very important meeting in manhattan last night in uh, an extremely important business meeting in, in, in manhattan a lot of things are happening a lot of doors are opening up and and some things that i'm I, i'm doing that amen i mean it's tremendous tremendous i mean when you when you hear about it when i went last night to Manhattan um, to seal a deal uh, last night and it was sealed at the table but I just want you to know that the Lord is doing some awesome things and what he's doing is a result of uh, the prayer it is a result of what the Lord 
as I already spoken, um, we did our first two days of the production of the, the, the musical that I wrote called The Night of Passion. Amen. And I have made the decision uh, as soon as I speak to Elder Boyd after prayer to bring it to New York and, and just open it up to my prayer group so that you are free of charge and because we work in the kinks out of it and we want you to see it so you can know what to pray for. Sister Kimberly came and saw it and um, I don't know, I, I, I may be a little prejudiced, but I think it is absolutely an awesome, awesome production. With intermission time. Some of, the, some of the scenes that are in it, in, in one scene with Micah Stampley, and intermission time, people never left the building. They were laid out all over the floor and just wailing out in God for the whole intermission until we came back for the second half. It is something that the Lord has ordained. It is, and so the Lord has got me doing so many different things. So we're, we're, we're hopefully trying to um, hook something up with Pastor Donafio so that we can bring it uh, to Long Island and park it for a couple of days so you all can get a chance to see it so that my intercessors can get an opportunity to pray for it before it really hits the road. Uh, we're doing spot things like that. And so in February, uh, for four months, we will be, you know, going on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays and Saturday matinees. And so I want you all to, to, to keep it in prayer and, and keep what we're doing in prayer. So when I'm not here, you know, I'm making things turn. I'm not just you know, just out, no prophets ain't that prayer, you know. It is because the appointments that I have could not be placed anywhere else because when you're dealing with people of that level of caliber, they have to put you in their schedules. And when you're the person that's, you know, coming in to accept the offer, you can't just say, well, I can't, you know. And when they say, you know, I'm a president of a company and I want to give you la la woo, the only time I can meet you is at 7 o'clock on a Monday night in Texas, you know. Until, you know, God bless me with a private jet. I just got to be where I have to be. Amen. And we believe in God for that. Amen. I got that on my prayer list. And so, uh, Pastor Hilliard out of uh, Houston, Texas has found me a plane. And um, uh, it, it's, it, it's owned by uh, one owner. It was brand new. And so, they, they, the, the asking price is $800,000. And we believe in God that God is going to provide me with the seed. So but I can do what I need to do and jet in here and jet out. But how many of y'all received that with me? Matter of fact, I need some intercessors. I need some intercessors for the next seven days to intercede that God would open up that door and that he would cause the finances to come in for me to, for me to be able to pay cash for it because that's what I want to do. Somebody, how many people do I, can I get to pray for me for the next seven days that you would intercede on behalf of my plane? So that we can do what we are called to do for the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. So as soon as Pastor, uh, Pastor John get in touch with Pastor Donatio and see if we can bring it out there. And we will let the prayer team know. And uh, we would allow you all to bring uh, guests, um, really as many as you want, uh, to, to, to come and see it. And I know that it's going to bless your life. I promise you it's going to bless your life. So prophetess is on the move, you know, doing so many things. so many things and so you know the property and I had to go down and see about the property and I'm meeting with the contractors and uh, the, the contractors and the architectures this week on uh, Thursday and Friday and starting the building plans for the spa and, 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 and moving the ministry from one building to the building that's on the property and it, it's a lot you know it's a responsibility when, when you pray and the Lord finally opens up the door you know you have to be diligent and you have to be prudent about what the Lord has given you to do. And you have to mind the business. Come on, somebody. You have to mind the business. The word of prophecy came through Tudor Bismarck that the Lord would give me finances from seven different streams. And all of them have come to pass. And so now I have to manage what the Lord is doing. Amen, somebody. And it's a result of my sacrifice here. So you don't ever have to worry about me giving up the prayer. You know, because I believe that it is because of how I come here and sacrifice that the Lord has blessed me. Amen, somebody. This is where I sow and I reap from the world. Amen, somebody. So though you may, you know, see me end up, you know, missing every now and then, 
but know this, you know, I shall return. <laughs> I shall return. <laughs> I'm coming back. Amen. So you pray my strength and I want you to pray for me. Pray that the Lord would give me the strength to continue to do what I do. Amen. I enjoy being here. I know God has called me to this prayer. I know he's called me to the Sunday morning 5 a.m. prayer that I do at, at, at my church in Atlanta. So I need your prayers because this isn't easy doing it. It's not easy jumping on the plane, you know, coming, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But my heart is in it. Amen, somebody. It's what my heart's desire is. So all I need you to do is that when Mondays come, I need you to start praying that God will give prophet the strength. Lord, give us strength to be able to make the journey because God has taken us to another level. He's not using me to take you to another level. He's taking us to another level. Amen. Somebody say Ephesians three times before next Tuesday. Somebody give God a praise for Elder Boyd as he comes. Come on, put your hands together and bless God for the woman of God. Come on, put your hands together and bless God for her. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on, just throw your head back and just give God a praise for her. Join hands with your neighbor. Normally I always stay um, after service and shake your hands and talk to you. Just wondering, I need you to excuse me today. I am leaving right out the door, heading on a flight, going down. I'm going to be with Providence tonight down in Dallas. Amen. And you can see it on TV in tomorrow night. Amen. And we're going to be talking about prayer. Amen. And we're going to be talking about y'all. Amen. And, and, and you that have sacrificed. And I want to tell you, out of the depths of my heart, I appreciate so many of you that are, who have the, as Prophet said this morning, who has the right P. Amen. You're here because of prayer and not because of an individual. And you understand it's an assignment. Amen. It, it, it's not, oh, well, when she's here, I'm there. I'm here because, you know how important you are to her? Because when she's out there and she can't be here, it's our prayer that strengthens her. Amen. So part of our assignment is to keep the prayer burning. Amen. To give her strength that God opens these doors and takes the prayer and us through those same doors that she's walking through. So from the depths of my heart, I, I want to say thank you for your faithfulness to God and God will never ever forget your labor of love amen and let me tell you this is where it starts it starts with you being faithful and faithfulness will always always pay off bow your heads Lord we thank you today Lord that you allowed the woman of God to come this way Lord we thank you for the word the richness of the word God and Lord even as we read Ephesians God we will understand even the more how we must live and pray the word because when we pray the word we pray the will and God you will always come forth out of your will now Lord we actually strengthen her Lord on her journey even as she mounts the airways this afternoon God anoint to bless her God even the programming this afternoon with Archbishop Duncan and and Lord, and Lord Prophet Mark Vereen Lord and Lord Prophet Alvernus Johnson Lord God as we all together meet God on that stage at TBA Lord let your anointing fall greatly Lord God as we talk about prayer God I pray that the spirit of prayer will rebirth in our nation in a new way God